device on my Eon Mira 9. This is the one that I got directly from Eon and I can do one tumbler at a time. I did recently receive my multi-roller and I can't wait to dive in to use that as well. I wanted to show you how to use this because while directions are included and you can post in all of the groups, there's nothing like seeing a video of how somebody actually uses it and connects it from start to finish in order to achieve the final project on whether it's a tumbler or a candle or whatever cylinder object you have. So, you want to learn how I do this? Keep watching! Okay, so aside from my Eon Mira 9, I do have the smart rotary device ready to be hooked up. I have my object that I'm going to be engraving on for today, and I will be using the Lightburn software. In the Lightburn software, just so I can get test settings right for this object, which I never engraved, I just created different power levels for each different color code so I can run it across to make sure that I will have a clean engraving once I actually go to do the mugs for the people who ordered them. Next, we're gonna undergo just a slight transformation of the laser. I'm going to need to open the front door in order to take the honeycomb tray out of the laser. And that will allow me more room and also allow me to sit the smart rotary device flat on the bars that are underneath the honeycomb tray. Next, I'm gonna lower the laser bed all the way down to the bottom, which ideally I probably should have done first just to avoid any collision with the gantry. Um, and then you can close this or you don't have to. Um, I'll probably actually just leave it open so you guys can see better and more clearly in the video. I am then gonna take my smart rotary device and I'm gonna put it in, set it on the laser bed but I'm not gonna plug it in just yet. That'll actually be the last thing that I do before I'm ready to engrave. Now on the smart rotary, we have four different wheels that will help move the cylinder object. So we're gonna wanna make sure that they are level. Now the last thing I engraved were wine tumblers. So these wheels are pretty close together. I'm gonna have to spread them apart a little bit just so my object has a little bit more sturdy of a base to it when it does go to engrave. It's just less room for it to wiggle around and it'll be more firm for the engraving. To do that, I'm gonna take off my object. my level to show you that this is not laying flat and the problem with this is that if I have the laser head over top of it the beam is going to be a lot closer to the surface here than it will be down here so the engraving will be different I need this cup to sit like this rather than that so we do have to rig it a little bit more and there's many different ways that you can do this but I'm going to show you the semi janky way that I do it to do this, I'm going to need an Allen wrench so that I can adjust these wheels and I'll also need a small level so I can sit it on top of my uh, object to make sure it is flat. I am going to remove the lid off of the object so that it won't get caught on anything if it opens so it doesn't collide with anything. And I'll set that to the side. If you do a lot of work with wood just like I do, then I know that you have a tremendous scrap pile somewhere. So grab your uh, scraps in different thicknesses and you should be able to just wedge it underneath the smart roller to try to get this part to rise. And so it's at an angle that it could be flat enough for engraving. I still got a little ways to go. I have some laughs sitting around here. Let's see if that helps a little bit more. Let's see if that helps a little bit more. And that's pretty darn close. Let me check. 
All right, so I need just a little shim. That is very good, very close. All right, so it's level, it looks funny, but it works for me. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and move my laser head so it is over top of the object, and I'm gonna try to make it to the auto, well, you can make it to the auto focus point, is at the highest point of the surface, and auto focus from there, or if you're gonna manually focus, which I tend to do, especially on um, surfaces like this or different engraving methods like this, you can do that too. So I have my auto focus or my manual focusing tool. And actually, just out of curiosity, I'm going to do an auto focus to see what the difference would have been. you're going to want to move that laser head exactly where you want the center of your engraving to be. Um, you can move it top to bottom, you can put it in the middle. I usually always put my artwork in the middle for the origin point just so that I can see visually the space around what will be engraved. Once the laser head is midpoint or roughly where I want it to be, I'll come over to my laser and hit the origin button, which is one step that I forget quite often and it can lead to other issues before I change the settings of my machine. So I hit origin, which now makes this very spot on my laser the home point for the laser head. All right, I already have my file loaded and I've showed you briefly that I just made a couple different dots and wrote down on here this is what it's gonna look like at 400 speed, 35 power, and I did the same speed all the way down to 15 power. One important thing to note is that when you have your artwork on the screen, especially in Lightburn, you are going to have to rotate it in the direction that it's going to appear on your laser bed. So right now, if I sent this file over to my laser, it's going to be on the cup up and down. So it would essentially wrap around the cup because that's the direction it's going in in my software. Of course, my air compressor kicks on right now. All right, so I'm turning this sideways. So because my cup is laying sideways, you'll be able to um, see my engraving go from top to bottom on the cup itself. From there, I need to go to um, tools, or I'm sorry, edit, and then machine settings. And I need to load my settings that I have set for a four wheel smart rotary. And this, if you have an Eon laser, came in the flash drive that supplemented the laser when it arrived. I'm gonna load them up. I need to usually scroll to the bottom and make sure that it's at the origin point because that's the point that I set it at. I think naturally on mine, this is absolute origin, which means it will go to the far back right corner of my laser. So I need to change it to where it says origin, click right in order to make the settings official, and then click okay. And now it should be ready to be sent over to the laser. So I'm gonna come over here, hit send. I just give a generic name for all of my files so they don't get clustersome. Clustersome. I think I make up words a lot. And then it's sent. So let's head on back to the laser. The final step in this um, rotary attachment hookup would be to take this and down here where it says rotary, you would want to plug that in. When you plug this in, it completely disables the ability to be able to move your laser head and your gantry back and forth or up and down your y-axis. You can only move it left and right. But since I have it where I would like it set, 
I'm just gonna leave it where it is. So for me, I just need to go to file. There's my file sitting there. All my different settings that you saw on the computer screen. And I'm going to frame just to make sure that the artwork is where I'm gonna want it to be. Now, as you can see, the cup is being rolled right off of the wheels, which is not cool. I'm gonna show you my trick to prevent that from happening. Somebody once told me to fill a sock up with rice, so I took um, one of my toddler's old slipper socks since their feet got too big, and I just drop it in the cup give it some weight so it is less likely to roll off of those wheels. Let's take it back. Okay, so now that I put the sock in there, um, I'm gonna reframe it just to make sure that we're good to go. And then we'll go from there. The framing looks good, so it's time to reframe. Um, tumblers that have coatings for it not to be shiny right away. I'm going to run some of my totally awesome over top of it to see how it turned out. And voila! I was able to test the perfect settings on one side, I tested the actual design on the other, and I am good to go. 13 more cups of caffeine coming right up. One last thing I wanted to mention was that when you are completely done with your rotary device, make sure that you do unplug it from the machine and then also head back to the light burn settings, go to tools, machine settings, and change your settings back to the flat standard settings of your machine so it doesn't get confused with what you need in order to do the cylinder objects. Thanks for watching.